Hi, I'm here with, uh, well, I'm Michael Sussman. I'm the uh, owner and founder of Strategic Rail Finance and the founder of On Track North America. And uh, this was my idea to begin a series of conversations with key leaders in industry and government, uh, really with an intention of having the most, you know, having dialogues about the most important matters of our time. So I'm very pleased and honored to have my good friend Van Cunningham here, who uh, really comes from an illustrious career in business and economic development and railroads, and um, uh, most recently as Vice President of Economic Development for BNSF. And uh, uh, Van, why don't you give a, a, some other insights into your experience? Well, I'm the former Chief of uh, Regional Planning for the Tennessee Valley Authority. Uh, I also served as the Assistant Director of Industrial Development for a number of years over power marketing for uh, TVA, Tennessee Valley Authority. I was the practice principal with Lockwood Green Consulting. We did international work and economic development and really served the Fortune 50 in manufacturing and siding facilities all over the world. Uh, I've had the pleasure of working in 42 countries and living in five. and. Uh, ending my career in the last 15 years of uh, full-time work with uh, the BNSF Railway, where I was responsible for 28 western states and three provinces in Canada and, and Mexico for all new rail development on the railroad. Well, that's uh, quite an impressive background, isn't it? Thank you. The, um, so we were talking earlier today about uh, strategic rail finances new tagline, which is, uh, you know, taglines are much more than just uh, just marketing words. They can really capture what it is that, you know, is at the core of one's message and, and, uh, and commitment, and in this case it is, and that's uh, the new tagline that we just um, uh, languaged for strategic rail finance is, Strategic Rail Finance for Sustainable Industrial Development. And um, that, this is so new that that brings up the question of what is sustainable industrial development? And uh, so I wanted to run a couple of thoughts that I have about what we mean by that and get your input. And so, Transportation, in my mind, is one part of an industrial system or systems. It tends these days to be looked at as a common service good to the marketplace in and of itself. And I'm sure that it's important that we start uh, considering, valuing, planning for not only how we transport, but what we transport. And that we begin as a society to make conscious decisions about what we want to transport. And particularly in this day and age, the degree to which we want to set up transportation to support the creation, the, 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 the drilling, the mining, the distribution of fossil fuels, either as fuel or as material for products, which is increasingly plastics, that that's part of what we want to be thinking about when we're thinking about transportation. How does that, how does that sound to you as a, an issue for transportation planners, economic development planners, and uh, you know, really our society. We had uh, 50 years of decline in the rail industry post-World War II. And as it declined uh, with the rise of the interstate system, with the transportation by truck being the principal way that goods and services were provided to people in the transportation realm, with railroads being largely uh, having an advantage in very bulky and very heavy types of commodities transportation, there was kind of a decline in interest in railroads and not much attention paid to it. With deregulation in the 1980s and the Staggers Act, 
uh, it gave railroads an opportunity to restructure themselves and we had something that for 20 years or so I guess we call the rail renaissance where rail began to come back and partly that was driven by the traditional markets which were the manifest or industrial markets the carload markets um, and, by, uh, and by the uh, agricultural commodities and, and uh, uh, energy commodities principally coal uh, the big change was the globalization of industry mm -hmm. and with the globalization of industry we had the rise of intermodal playing a key role and somebody had to figure out how to do intermodal and early attempts to do intermodal and intermodal is where you're taking something in a, uh, putting it in a container uh, for the most part internationally uh, in China for example you put it in a container you put it on a steamship you bring it to the port you take it off the steamship you put it onto the onto a, uh, a rail car and you transport it across the country to some distribution point. So you had a shift from manufacturing in our economy toward distribution. As a result of that, you had, while it always had been important in certain industries, for example, you always move steel and certain dimensional products, lumber has been moved by rail for um, uh, well over 100 years, 150 years. Uh, in a lot of industries, it wasn't particularly important. It was important in electronics because you can put a whole lot of very valuable electronics in one 53-foot van and put it on the interstate. But when you start moving those electronics internationally and you're putting them into containers, then all of a sudden you find rail being integrated at a much more central location in the economy than it's been since probably the 1930s, uh, certainly since the post-war period. So the focus of your efforts um, is in an arena that has become increasingly important and it's going to be important for our manufacturing future as well because we, we do have a manufacturing future a lot of people think we don't mm -hmm. still uh, the major change is it takes a lot less people to do manufacturing than it did at one time we're going through the equivalent of an agricultural revolution where we went from 12 to 13 people per farm on uh, 40 or 50 acres to one person on a thousand we're going to have that same mm -hmm. kind of effect in the, in the industrial realm. So this focus on understanding the role of transportation and particularly how to integrate rail with uh, cross country or interstate transportation with local and with trucking is going to be key uh, to how we function in the future. So what I heard was that in Throughout the history of railroad development and supply chain development, there's always an, an eye toward what is it that we want to be shipping and where do we want to be shipping. And so the idea of now looking at down at the specific commodity level of is that, you know, where, where is the future of that commodity like oil and making conscious decisions as a society is really not that different from how we've been operating for for decades I, I think it is different and, and I think what's different about it is that for manufacturers for example they well, they were focused on uh, labor energy material inputs and transportation, if you made a list and a hierarchy of where you're going to locate a facility, for example, mm -hmm. or what am I going to, am I, I have two locations, am I going to do A or B, which one is going to be the bigger one? Transportation has played a relatively small role in that decision historically, unless you were dealing with a very heavy commodity or a very bulky commodity that needed to be on rail. So maybe 10 or 15 percent of the uh, location decisions that were being made or the consciously were really heavily rail dependent and somebody was paying attention to that. Today that's not really true. Today it's become increasingly important. So making a conscious decision, I would say that if, if on the whole uh, rail trans transportation was maybe the number 18 or 19 out of 20 factors in making a decision in the past, for on the average now it's somewhere between 5 and 8. So it's moved up to the top of the list. So our need to educate ourselves and to understand how to make these conscious decisions to be more sustainable, to be more effective, to be more viable as a company is increasing. 